perspective on all of this now from James Orlando. He's a director and senior economist at TD Economics. James, nice to see you. Me too. Um, you know, and it was a story in the U.S. too today. We keep talking about resilient economies. I'm not sure if uh, people on Main Street feel that way right now, but, but how would you assess this latest Canadian economic data? Uh, certainly a very positive report. It, as you mentioned earlier, it, it points to very strong growth for the first quarter. Uh, 18 of 20 industries saw actual growth. So, you know, that's positive. It's just widespread. It's broad. Um, the question in our minds is that, is this going to be a flash in the pan or is it something to be more sustained? We saw the exact same thing happen in 2023 in the first quarter where growth was looking like it was going to be around 3%. And then in the following quarters, we had lackluster growth for the rest of the year. So this growth today almost seemed American in the sense that U.S. growth has been consistently outperforming, surprising everyone. But the problem is for Canada, we don't think this is something that can be sustained. There's a few mm. factors that make it that we're not favorable on. One is the fact that Canadian households are still under pressure. Um, two is the fact that we don't have nearly as much investment going on in Canada like the United States does. And three, we're seeing population strategies from the federal government coming into play, which will limit population growth going forward which is, has been really the main source of economic growth in this country over the last couple of years. Yeah. So our view is that, yeah, this is nice. It means that the bottom hasn't fallen out of the Canadian economy, but we don't think it's something that's really going to be something to write home about when it comes to how sustainable this is. You're the second guest I've had today that has highlighted the fact that all of these updates from the federal government on the population story recently, which seem to be coming because of these growing pains from population growth all of a sudden mean that economists like yourself have to think about actually what the growth story is now going to look like since we're, we're pairing back on that. So that is that that is a notable development certainly in the last couple of weeks. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So as I mentioned, population growth is the form of growth that we've had as an econo in our economy. Yeah. Um, population growth has grown about 3% last year, but our economy only grew at 1%. So uh, what does that tell you? It tells you that we're, we've been underperforming even our population growth. We should be at least growing at that level, given that population path. But that's not expected to continue. We're looking at more going from 3% to about 1%, just based on some of these changes. So you talked about some of the trends we saw early last year in economic numbers, yeah. which are some food for thought. I remember early last year when the Bank of Canada's messaging to the market on interest rates was they, they, they might be done, and then they had to kind of walk back a little bit on that, and here we are at a tightrope moment. It feels like not just for the Bank of Canada, but yeah, we're in Canada. Let's talk about the Bank of Canada. Sure. We, if they look at this data today, and as I mentioned, it seemed like the market pushed out ever so slightly its expectations for rate cuts, but this is a market that is expecting rate cuts. How are they supposed to interpret this kind of number? Yeah, well, let's remember what happened last year. So last year, we had really strong growth in the first quarter. Um, the real estate market started taking off. The Bank of Canada was on hold with respect to interest rates. And then they got all this data come in. They're like, okay, we need to hike rates again. And ever since that, the economy has produced effectively no growth during that 2023 time period. Um, right now, we kind of know that these factors going on in the Canadian economy aren't really favorable for economic growth. Um, what we're looking at is an economy that is probably going to produce, you know, close, maybe trend, probably below trend growth this year, um, assuming the Bank of Canada cuts. So we actually need these rate cuts to actually come through to actually get decent growth out of our economy. Mm. Um, I think the big factor for the Bank of Canada is how much time can they wait? If the economy was actually producing negative growth, we're starting to see job losses, you know that the Bank of Canada would be already cutting interest rates because inflation is already within their target window right now of 1% to 3%. So this report today, the recent economic data we've gotten that shows the bottom isn't falling out, but it doesn't show that we're probably going to be accelerating into the future, probably just means that the Bank of Canada has optionality with respect to when it can actually decide to cut interest rates. And so that's why you're seeing people move from June towards July for that exact reason. So my final question, because you talked about household debt, which is a, a differentiator from the United States. Yeah. I mean, you, like, it, it's true. Like, the, the employment picture has had some, some signs of weakness, but you could also argue it's been resilient. So if we shift the, the subject to 
the number of Canadians who have mortgages that will renew over the next couple of years, this is also one of those things that comes up. Like even if you're still employed, but if all of a sudden you become the latest person to get mortgage sticker shock, mm. how does that impact the economy from here? So how does the Bank of Canada have to think about that differentiating factor versus say the United States? Yeah, so, so we had Americans after the global financial crisis spend 10 years deleveraging. And so going into the pandemic and since then, they've been in a great financial position to be able to handle the impact of high inflation and high interest rates. So we haven't seen Americans having to pull back their spending. But if you actually follow people through time, so Canadians through time, you look at measures like spending per person in Canada. This has been negative consistently for actually the last three quarters and five of the last six quarters in Canada. So really since the Bank of Canada started increasing interest rates, per person spending is being cut. And our own internal data that we have, when we follow mortgage holders through time, we show that Canadians, when they reset their mortgages, are pulling back their spending, probably about on average about 2%. And we know 2024 is gonna be a big reset year because mortgage rates really haven't fallen very much. Yeah. So every single person that resets this year is getting, as you say, a sticker shock, which means that they're gonna have to pull back spending in other areas of their, of their spending basket. And so that's tough for business. Is they're, able, they're seeing spending being pulled back on what they're trying to sell. So I'm going to squeeze in one more question. I'm, 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 I'm delighted that you brought up the past decade. There's, there's, it's a bit ironic what you're talking about because it was given our, uh, our relatively strong balance sheets for households going back to the financial crisis that allowed Canadians in a low interest rate environment to start taking on debt. Yep. Um, and so um, one of the questions, I guess, going forward when it comes to like the, the housing market in particular is you keep hearing people say, we need more productivity in this country. Mm -hmm. And I keep hearing the experts say, well, we're putting so much time, energy and money into the housing market. Oh, yeah. That makes it very difficult for us to do all those things you're supposed to do to have a great long-term growth plan. I mean, what is your what is your quick fix on productivity? Is there one? Yeah, there's probably no quick fix on this thing. Um, as you said, a lot of our investment dollars need to go towards productivity enhancing things. So what makes you and me more productive in our daily day basis? How do we get more stuff out of our own efforts? Um, if our investment efforts are towards real estate, you know, we know that construction is one of the sectors that has the least amount of productivity over the last decade. Now, what we need to do is you follow the US example, we're starting to see huge amounts of investment in research and development. We're seeing um, just public private partnerships trying to get um, shovels in the ground, trying to make things more productive, make our infrastructure more productive. Hmm. How do we get that investment? How do we incentivize investment from businesses, which is very lackluster in Canada, relative to the United States, to actually enable us to get that technology in the hands of workers so that we can actually do more with our time? That really is the answer. It's no quick fix but we need to start moving in that direction.